Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this World Organization to investigate the persecution of Falun Gong, organize, uh, this organization to hold this forum. Uh, today we have two sessions of this program. Uh, the first part is what we are going on. Uh, this uh, the, the panel here uh, to do this presentation about the, the uh, organization and what we have done. And today we are very glad to invite the speakers. First is uh, Professor Sun Nye, and then we have uh, Mr. Ethan Gutman from United Kingdom. Then we have Dr. Wang Ziyuan from New York, and then we have Dr. Charles Lee from New York. And each of them will have their own uh, specific topic focused on the investigation. And uh, let me first introduce Professor Sun Nye. Uh, Professor Nye is the chairman of mechanical engineering department at the Catholic University of America. He's a scholar in clean energy technology and published more than 100 scientific papers and seven, he got seven patents of invention. And uh, he wrote one college textbook. He's the recipient of the United Nations Lectureship Award, Charles Carman's Teaching Excellence Award, and honorary professorship awards from five universities in China and Taiwan. As a Falun Gong practitioner for 20 years, Professor Ni has been a keen observer and China expert, particularly in human rights and religious freedom. He has been an active advocate, e event organizer, and a powerful speaker and leader in numerous community, academia, and the congressional events and services. He's also the vice president of WOIPFG, and the Vice President of Toydown Center, and the former President of Epoch Times in Washington, D.C., and the founder of Washington Forum, and the co-founder of the Vice President of Alliance for Democracy, Democracy of Asians in USA. And the topic he's gonna give to us is the organ harvesting crimes and the persecutions of Falun Gong for WOIPFG 14-year investigation. Uh, before he begins, would you please turn down your cell phone or put to the vibe. Thank you. Now, welcome, Professor Nye. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Dr. Wang. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to this uh, event at the Congress. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very honored today to be invited uh, to speak uh, on the 14 years of investigations of uh, WALPAC and uh, had a chance to speak along with this distinguished panelist of uh, China expert, okay, renowned investigator, uh, on behalf of the event organizer, WAPAC. Uh, <coughs> I'd like to welcome everybody. Then we're gonna proceed with the lecture today. Zui, sign. Okay. It's, it's not coming up. What's wrong with that? Color, color, color is not right. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, the, the next page, please. Yeah, the World Organization to Investigate the Persecution of Falun Gong, uh, also called the World Pack, in Chinese, Straits Ha Guoji, is a non government organization founded uh, in January 20th, uh, uh, 2003, 14 years ago. And this is actually ex exactly 42 months uh, after the slanderous propaganda by communists on Falun Gong. So on uh, exactly 42 months, then the war, uh, the war pack was founded, headquartered in, uh, in New York, and now we have uh, the branch offices in U Europe, Australia, Asia, and Canada. Yeah, our mission is to uh, investigate um, investigate the criminal conduct, okay, of all organizations and individuals involved in the persecution of Falun Gong. To bring them to full disclosure, no matter how long what it take, no matter how deep or how far we have to search, then to restore and uphold the justice and the humanity in China. Next slide, please. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, 
you all know that uh, Falun Gong has been uh, persecuted for the last 18 years. It was initiated by the former head of Communist Party, Jiang Zemin, and uh, orchestrated and carried out by the notorious 610 office. Then when they do the evil persecutions, they have the policy they follow to eradicate China, uh, Falun Gong. They are just ruin the reputation of Falun Gong and block, uh, block the finance and destroy the body. And from top to the bottom, they say that um, you can torture them to death, then the, which will be regarded as, as committed suicide. And you don't, the police or the perpetrator don't need to find out who they are, where they come from, just cremate the body directly. So they go through the, the whole apparatus of the government, uh, go through this, the, the comprehensive crackdown of this innocent, peaceful group of the mainstream society at that time was reported 100, 000, 100 million Chinese people practice Falun Gong. And this uh, represents the unprecedented uh, uh, state-run media propaganda, slandering uh, Falun Gong, and there was mass arrest. Then after 42 months of slandering, uh, the victims of Falun Gong, we decided to fund this uh, organization, which is the, the organizer of the event today. The judicial assistance, okay, in China is overseen by the Communist Party. And this is not the judicial system you can count on and, and to, to have CCP's controlled judicial systems to really investigate uh, such scale of crime. And there's no way to have a judicial system to help bring the justice to the innocent people. This is the reason why the, the war pack was funded uh, 14 years ago. And in the crackdown started in July 1999. Before that, it was a very popular uh, Qigong practice in China. And this is reported by, uh, by the US News and World Report in early 1999 that almost in every green land of China in the morning is uh, practiced by a large group of in, uh, mainstream people is called Falun Dafa. Then, since the crackdown, there's a, a large scale of the arbitrary mass uh, arrests and detention. All kinds of torture methods and killing being applied to this innocent group. Uh, the picture on the left upper corner was uh, uh, on October 2000 at uh, Tiananmen Square. Uh, a practitioner of Falun Gong with yellow shirts was, yeah, was uh, uh, knocked down by two uh, plain-closed uh, police. Uh, one step, one step uh, with shoes, step on the face of the head. The other with a knife, is uh, nicked to the uh, neck. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's Let uh, stop, yeah. stop for a while. Uh, let's welcome the Congressman Dana Roa Barker. Uh, let, 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 me, let me have a brief introduction. Uh, Congressman Donald Rauerbacher, he's here. He's uh, the most forceful leader in the Congress about human rights and the freedoms and uh, uh, anti-dictatorship, including communism. He has been uh, uh, holding uh, two hearings recently on the organ harvesting, which is the theme of the today. And more importantly, uh, he helped us to reserve these beautiful rooms for the events. Without further ado, please give a round of applause to Congressman. No, this is fine. Yeah. Look, I, I've only got a few minutes because it's, uh, uh, you know, my family is in California, and I fly back every week, and uh, uh, so I've got to go and catch a plane and get ready for, get ready to catch a plane. And uh, but let me just suggest that uh, uh, I am here because I think it is vitally important that the world recognize what the Falun Gong is doing in China and also uh, the outreach that the Falun Gong has 
uh, to the rest of the world, not just what's going on in China, but what you're doing in, by spreading the word in the rest of the world for the good things that you believe. I mean, the Falun Gong has some wonderful beliefs that, uh, I mean, I'm a Christian, and uh, but I identify with uh, much of what you are telling the people of the world and the people of China in particular. Uh, so it's, but it's, it's important not to get discouraged. And I know that sometimes it must be discouraged when you'll see uh, uh, basic, uh, these people who are um, hobnobbing with uh, uh, the very people that have made decisions to go and, and brutalize the Falun Gong in, in China. Uh, and uh, this, I, the, the organ harvesting is just the, the something everybody can understand is how evil that is. But it takes uh, some explanation and it takes some hard work to get information understood by someone else. I mean, it's, once you've experienced it, it's easy for you, but a lot of people, it's like me, I have to go back to my family now. So I have a limited amount of time. Well, people have a limited amount of time, but we need to break through and, uh, that barrier, you might say, and say, we need your attention on this because this is a vital, this goes to the heart and soul of what humanity is all about. And uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the repression of people who are advocating such wonderful brotherhood and, and, and honesty and hard work and all the good things that, that the Falun Gong uh, stresses, for anyone to be oppressing that concept and those universal humanitarian ideals uh, that is, as I say, an evil, but we need to make sure people know there is that, that evil force in the world. So you are somewhat, the Falun Gong, unfortunately, is what you would call, uh, I don't know if you know the expression about the canary in the mine. Well, what happens to Falun Gong in this world is going to happen to all the good and decent people of this world. And when you are being oppressed and brutalized, and if they, if whoever is doing that is, is ignored, if that brutality is ignored, well then no one on this planet is safe. Because that's saying that that type of behavior is something we can just ignore and go on with our regular lives. So I, I do, by the way, think that it's, it's very possible that there could be a uh, change in China at some point. I think that Falun Gong and people working individually at the, are cutting the foundation away from the tyranny and the tyrants and the crooks that have been running China. And uh, so I am so, I'm somewhat uh, optimistic. Uh, I try to be realistic, uh, and sometimes being realistic doesn't make you happy. But... Uh, I, I'm optimistic about the outcome of this. I think that we will have a better world, but I will give you the, that's the optimistic assessment. This will be a better world because something good will happen and is happening one by one in China now at the foundation of China. So that's good, and that's going to make it a better world. The bad news is there will be some other evil that will rise up among humankind and People, good people will have to deal with it in the future. They always will. <coughs> and, uh, I uh, am very, uh, very proud to have stood with you and uh, very glad that you're making. I, I hope I will get a copy of this uh, video. Yes. And uh, I'm very happy you're doing things like this video. So thank you all very much. God bless. And uh, I'm going to head back to California pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, can, can you hold? Yeah, we do have the film. Then uh, this, uh, the organizer, this non-government organizations had a special report I want to submit to you and the, Congress, and the U.S. Congress, particularly the Foreign Affairs Committee. Right. This includes a, a link of a list uh, of those perpetrators. Right. Uh, every, okay. uh, yeah, there was a, they're called the net black list of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Then also the copy of the, the <coughs> documentary okay. and the brief report on organ harvest. Yeah, this is Dr. Wang from. Doctor, good well, to be Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, he's the president of God, that. God bless you, my friend. Uh, are there any questions for the con for congressman? I, I've got to. I've got to run. Yeah, we, we have that.
So let okay, let's go back to Professor Nye. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry, let, let's get back. So uh, Falun Gong was uh, persecuted brutally and uh, in large scale in China. The judicial assistance, uh, we, it's impossible to count on them to bring the justice. So this is the reason of funding of this or now government organization, the WAPAC. Next, please. Zui. Zui, next, please. <coughs> next, please. Yeah. Then, uh, 14 years ago, uh, we founded this. In the last 14 years, what has been done? What have we done? Uh, we are very, uh, we work very diligently. We are very proud that we make uh, s the following six areas of efforts and uh, is a contributions uh, to the to the community. Uh, the first one is uh, 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 in the last three years, we released uh, in the last uh, total nine lists of name of the perpetrator of uh, persecution of Falun Gong. And total, uh, there are 76,000 individuals and 35,000 institutional organizations that alerted to, to, re to be responsible for the persecutions. And uh, just a few minutes ago, we just submit that list to Congressman Daniel Rotterbacher to the Foreign Affairs Committee of the US Congress. Then <clears throat> later on, we're gonna submit to others. And yesterday, we submit the list to the State Department. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, another area is, uh, so we, in the last 10 years, uh, we did uh, systematic, uh, comprehensive, uh, investigation on the live organ harvesting uh, uh, in China, particularly Falun Gong. Then uh, the more than 10,000 uh, phone investiga investigative phone was made. Then the next one is uh, uh, of all these various uh, uh, forms of persecutions involve various uh, organizations in China. Uh, in the last 14 years, we have published 339 investigative reports on various uh, aspects of that. Is, uh, <clears throat> then the next one is, uh, yeah, uh, the, we, uh, for, for very serious criminal cases uh, for the individuals, we sent notice and notification. Uh, close to 7,000 of those individuals, perpetrators, we make investigate of that, uh, give the chance of them to explain. And I would elaborate a little bit more. And lastly, <coughs> and we also, in the last few minutes, we established the global monitoring and tracking systems uh, in over 500 major cities in the world to monitor the perpetrators uh, when they travel outside China. Uh, we're gonna sue them, we're gonna bring them down. The last one, we also help many victims uh, for their illegal <coughs> persecutions and against those major perpetrators. Next, please. Uh, I liberate very briefly of one of them, each one of them. The first one, uh, in the last few years, we have released nine times, we call nine lists uh, of the name of perpetrator. Uh, total is more than 76,000 uh, individuals. Among that, uh, uh, 7,700 7, are from the notorious 610 office. Then uh, also there's close to 10,000 individuals uh, of CCP's commissions of politics and law. Those are the major uh, <coughs> people in that back, yeah. The, for the second areas of 10 years of investigations, I won't elaborate much because the distinguished panelists will elaborate in details of that. We did make, this is the map of uh, mainland China. Uh, those markers uh, refers to various uh, hospital and uh, organ transplant center. We made an investigation of that. Then, um, and we, we set up uh, uh, the individual files of uh, 95, more than 95 hundreds surgeons of organ transplant who are alleged for the organ harvesting crime. <clears throat> then uh, on that, particularly uh, about one and a half years ago, we published a very comprehensive uh, organ harvesting uh, reports called the Final Harvest in November 2015. Next one. Then <coughs> and recently we made two videos, uh, documentary of that. On the right is re 
irrefu irrefutable uh, evidence. Uh, this is a two hour long um, lectures on the various evidence of organ harvesting crime. It uh, was just released recently. On the left is the harvested, harvested life 10 years of investigation. This is the documentary has, has won the various award. And this is going to be show right after this for one hour. <clears throat> Next one. Another area we, we did is uh, systematic investigation of uh, persecutions. Then, and we, we, then <coughs> for each special investigations, we, we collect information, make it, uh, investigative efforts, and make a report. Then we publish the reports first in Chinese, then translate into English and other languages. And this is one of the reports uh, uh, we published. Uh, this is in English. Then they are all certainly available in, uh, in Chinese. They are all on our website, uh, free of charge to download, and free of free information for you to reference to. And we really hope that uh, U.S. Congress and the U.S. government can take advantage of our evidence we collected with uh, <clears throat> tens of thousands of volunteers collect all this, this of that. Among the list of the three, more than 300 reports, particularly of, uh, it's worthwhile to mention, there are about 20 different sub-areas of that. For instance, the highlighted in the blue is, uh, uh, we did many reports on this uh, Tiananmen Square, self immunization hoax. That was very early work, and then we still continue to publish that to, <clears throat> to, com to, to make a Chinese citizens to see. Then uh, another one, we did uh, comprehensive live organ harvesting reports. Uh, uh, others, uh, we have made uh, in the past three reports on slavery products fr from the forced labor camp. Then we are working on a more recent uh, comprehensive report on the slavery product and will be released very soon. <clears throat> then <clears throat> there are others. Um, uh, we also did special report, for instance, on psychiatric abuse, and <clears throat> we made investigation and write reports. Next slide, please. <clears throat> then, uh, for instance, we also made an investigation of how CCP influence abroad. They have uh, media infiltrations of uh, U.S. mainstream medias and Chinese language medias, particularly to uh, Daji and the New Town Dynasty medias. We made reports on that. <clears throat> Another highlighted is um, uh, <clears throat> this communist uh, just interview with uh, Sen Yun performance, the world tour. Every year they toured about more than 100 city, uh, 100, uh, just 140 city, perform about 500 shows. They made interference, we made reports and release and for other people to reference to. <clears throat> then also we made a special report of those Falun Gong practitioners being persecuted, tortured to death. So among this 20, 21 different subcategory, we have different reports, different specific. They are all available on our website, website in, in both Chinese and English language. There are other languages for you to reference to. Please feel free to use those informations, and when you use that information, please give out some credits to, for the citation to WordPack. Another area we did uh, uh, extensively, it's um, almost daily job, day to day, is we issue the notice or notifications to those very serious criminal case. Okay, for instance, the, <clears throat> the armed police or the police uh, torture the Falun Gong practitioner in China. Then <clears throat> once we identify that uh, serious case, then we send out the notice of investigations to the individuals. We send it uh, to the directly by registered mail with 20 or 30 copies to the individuals, make sure he receive it, and also others, uh, his authorities, his communities, the place he work, his family, we send the 20 to 30 letters to notify them you are under investigations. Please collaborate with uh, our inv investigation and, the, if you, uh, and feel free to tell we, you are innocent. 
but in this case, it's almost daily on daily daily basis. Every day we issue that. So in the past 14 years, we have issued close to 7,000. So in the sense of a 500 uh, notice notification every day. Not only the first uh, notice to them, we uh, after th after three weeks we collect them, we send the second notice and give them the chance to explain. Eventually, uh, they we. Um, <clears throat> we make a judgment whether this guy is uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, is uh, guilty or innocent on that. Then the, the next one is uh, we also did a lot of work on the uh, the global monitoring and the tracking systems. This is this is covers uh, more than 100 countries in the world, uh, more than 500 major city in the world. We have. Uh, volunteer friends and colleague there. And we monitor all these major perpetrators when they travel outside China. Then we uh, prepare the legal documents, sue them. Those indictment uh, documents uh, serve them and have them have a chance to go to the court to, to, te to testify whether they are innocent. This is one of the cases in 2009. Uh, the, the director of the Lao Gai just forced labor camp bureaus of Guangdong province. He visited New York and we served a legal paper to, to them. And basically they were terrified. They were very scared. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, when we served them, they were so scared, they dare not to face us. And so scared as to, they, they try to avoid uh, to go to the main entrance of the hotels or of the building for the conference, for the meeting, and they are hiding. And once the local court, uh, based on the <coughs> file by the Falun Gong practitioner of uh, <coughs> uh, the court, serve their uh, indictment documents to them, they tell not to go to the court. One of the cases, uh, Su Rong, who is the uh, secretary, um, uh, party secretary of Gansu province, when he visited uh, Zambia in, of Africa, he was uh, sued by a Falun Gong practitioner who was uh, <coughs> pers pursued by his order. He was so scared, he, uh, he escaped secretly through the third country and fled back home and dared not to come out at all. In this way, many of the victims, uh, we help uh, them to shoot the seniors level of, uh, <coughs> uh, in the Communist Party. And, uh, Almost, but almost that uh, when the when communist regimes try to choose the who will be the foreign affairs uh, officials, diplomats, or the representative of trade or business, they need to first check whether they are clean on Falun Gong <coughs> persecution. They <coughs> they were not assigned ministers or others with Falun Gong things because we're going to chase them around the world. <coughs> the the last one, that's. Then recently we publish, uh, the, published the, the President Xi Jinping with his uh, anti-corruption crackdown. He did uh, 210 the so-called tigers. Tigers means uh, uh, the governor, governor, deputy governor of the province or the minister or deputy minister of the departments in the central governments. And uh, or there's, uh, in the military is two-star general or emeralds and above. Among these 210, uh, so-called big tigers being uh, arrested, 60%, uh, 126, uh, were clearly listed on World Pack list of perpetrators. <coughs> then for others, we are still doing investigations. Next one. So what we have done in the past 14 years, uh, <coughs> we were very uh, proud uh, that uh, we have completed collect of evidence on the persecution of Falun Gong, and we are waiting for the grand trial at the inter International Criminal Court or any other form. We are ready to bring the perpetrator and the CCP down to justice. Then, thank you, thank you. Okay, we have a statement to be read by Nancy from uh, Congressman. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. 
by yeah. the Office of uh, Congressman Paul Pratik. Please stand up. Uh, give me the hand. Uh, help. Uh, he bring the message from uh, Congressman uh, Christmas. I'll help to read it. Uh, Organ harvesting in China harvested a life 10 years of investigation documentary screen uh, written by Representative Christos Christopher Smith, Congressional Executive Commission on China on two, June 23, 2017. I want to thank you all for inviting me today. Thank you also for all the work you do to educate the world about the atrocities suffered by Falun Gong practitioners in China. Organ trafficking is an evil that needs a global response. We know the conflict in Syria has created a black market for human organs, and ISIS has sanctioned the harvesting and the sale of organs from an apostate bodies into Muslim body, even if the donor is still alive during harvesting. We also have horrifying evidence of eating victims whose organs are brutally removed and sold when their families are unable to pay the traffickers a ransom. The biggest problem from far in, by far in chi is China, and the government sanctioned harvesting of organs from executed prisoners, including prisoners of conscience. That has gone on for two decades with impunity. Four years ago, I asked for more evidence about organ harvesting in China. You have provided that evidence, along with Ethan Gottman, David Kugel, and David Mattis. Despite, despite efforts by the communist government to initiate reforms to their transplant system and curtail, curtail transplant tourism, the stories of abuse uh, continue. The Chinese government uh, Chinese government says it is moving toward adherence to ethical standards and the procedural guidelines, but in the absence of uh, accurate information and with a history of rep repression to cover the past, past abuses, can their assurance be believed? It is important to remember that the Chinese government has been trafficking in organs for profit for two decades. In 1998, I chaired a hearing on the sale of body parts in the People's Republic of China. The late Harry Wu arranged for a witness who was a former guard at one of China's Laogai prisons. He brought in, in pictures and provided testimony. testimony. We had everything he said and everything he brought to us authenticated for accuracy. The witness for organ harvesting sat in front of Congress and admitted that prisoners scheduled to be executed, including political and religious religion, uh, prisoners, were, were kept alive long enough to take out the desired organs. Whatever was needed could be gotten quickly, kidney, livers, lungs. Doctors were able to put in the odor and the prison wardens were, would feel that odor. Many things have changed in China over the past 20 years, but the evidence you present here today shows not much has changed in the area of organ trafficking. The more people are not crying out for transparency, accountability, and justice on the issue of organ harvesting in China is appalling and sad. What objectives do we use to describe what Chinese doctors and hospitals have been doing? How do we describe doctors who engage in forced abortions and sterilizations? Ster sterilizations how can we understand doctors who experiment on prisoners of unconscious detained in psychiatric hospitals? Psychiatric hospitals. Ordinary words like concerned, disturbed, or shocking just seem inadequate. Barbaric and inhumane are better words. If even half of the claims made by your documentary are true, we must call organ trafficking in China truly barbaric and a crime against humanity. We cannot accept more excuses. We need answers. We need a concerned effort to stop this barbaric practice in China and globally. 
Chinese officials and its medical community must be told the consequence of their actions and they must be held accountable. The arbitrary detention, torture, psychiatric experimentation, and organ harvesting experienced by prisoners of conscience, and in particular the targeting of Falun Gong practitioners, is unacceptable, repre reprehensible, and illegal. It must be ended immediately. I promise to continue working with you toward the end. Thank you. By Chris Smith. Thank you so thank much. You. <coughs> well, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, uh, Congress Chris Smith uh, also worked uh, along with uh, Congress Daniel Rauterbacher to hold the hearings, the last two hearings on organ harvesting. Actually, Congress Smith worked on that more than yeah, more, more than uh, more than ten years ago. Then uh, uh, Congress Smith uh, is one of one of the most senior member in the Congress and cared about the human rights and uh, freedoms and religious freedoms. Then he told me one day that uh, for China alone, he has held more than 50 hearings in the Congress, cared about the China's various aspects of human rights. Then he's the co-chairman of uh, the CECC, Congressional Executive Branch Commission on China. And, <clears throat> and we, uh, the, the World PAC has a package we like to submit to uh, CECC, then maybe we submit to the staff director, Paul Proctic, who has been a long time supporter to us too. Let's give him a, a applause of hands. Okay, thank you. Our, our, our next speaker would be uh, Mr. Ethan Gutman. Uh, Mr. Gutman is an investigative writer, human rights defender, a China watcher, and an author. Uh, he wrote two famous books. One is called Losing the New China, a story of American commerce, desire, and betrayal. And the other book, The Slaughter. I'm here to bring you a book. I bought it. <laughs> yeah. Mass killings, organ harvesting, and China's secret solution to its this is then the problem. And Mr. Gutman has testified before the U.S. Congress, the U.S. House Committee on Foreign Affairs, the European Parliament, and the United Nations. He is nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017 for his investigative reporting and research on the state-sanctioned organ harvesting from Chinese prisoners of conscience, mainly Falun Gong practitioners. Okay, let's welcome Mr. Gutman. Uh, I'm really very happy to be here today, especially uh, always happy to be under the, uh, I, I like to call you white thing, okay, that's my thing, all right? Uh, you, people, other people say world organization, I say white thing. Uh, and uh, I'm always happy to be here under, under your banner. Uh, now, I have my own group that I'm associated with, with David Kilgore and David Matus, which is uh, End Organ Pillaging, which is uh, largely not Falun Gong practitioners, it's largely uh, uh, outsiders from Falun Gong who've gotten very involved in this issue. Uh, but the fact is, uh, I don't see our groups in any way uh, in opposition, and I'm very proud to be, I have a special relationship, if you like, a uh, special friendship with White Fig, and this is, uh, it's very important to me. Uh, particularly because uh, I've got three doctors and a professor on the panel, I'm the only one who doesn't have a title here. So, uh, <laughs> the, look, let me, uh, it's kind of, uh, I wanted to build a, a very quick talk about a question I recently got from the, the Tories in London, that's where I live, and, and we've, they've been holding a lot of hearings on, on this issue. Uh, the Tories, the, there's a certain faction of the Tories which are very oriented towards human rights. And they uh, recently approached me and said, hey, when it comes to organ harvesting, we were thinking of holding a hearing, but you know, what's new? Right? And, uh, you know, this is a curious question from a tactical standpoint, and I'll get into that a, a little bit, but it's also a very difficult question for people like us, because we're immersed in this, okay? <laughs> Every day we wake up and we're thinking about this issue and so forth, and to us, you know, we, we wake up every day also knowing that perhaps 25 people are, 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 are being killed. I mean, maybe more. Uh, you know, you can argue about those numbers, but I think uh, 25 is actually quite a reasonable estimate. Every day. 
Uh, and these are innocent people. We're not even talking about the, the you know, thugs or people who've committed terrible crimes. We're talking about people who can't be condemned to death by any, even by any stretch of Chinese law. So, but I think the question is legitimate, nonetheless. What is new? What has happened? Uh, and to answer that, I think we have to just, I want to go very briefly through the history of, of tactically, again, what's happened over the last year. Because 2016, and to some extent the early part of 2017, can fairly be called a global tipping point for this issue, okay, externally. Uh, that began in 2015 with the White Fig Report. Uh, now, this, the Wojtyg report was on transplant volumes in China. It had a lot of other issues as well, and it was very much oriented towards a kind of a, a crime-fighting aspect, if you like, as you mentioned. But it was significant because of the power of the raw data alone. It was amazing. It was absolutely, the first time I looked at it, I felt as if I were falling off a cliff. It was rather... Uh, unbelievable, spectacular. It happened that a lot of the language was a little over spectacular too, and we worked on that. But I think the point, uh, it, it, it shocked me, particularly the chapter on emergency liver transplants. Now this is where somebody comes in, they've got an acute liver crisis, and they basically, it has to be resolved in very short order, maybe six hours. They are doing it. They're doing it in four hours, doing it in two hours. Now there's so many cases that they, uh, that Wojtek had come up with here. Uh, and, you know, there's no way to look at that data and not say there's a stable out there. There's a stable of people that are ready to be killed, uh, and they can be killed at any time. And then you look at the warm ischemia time, that is the amount of time between the organ is passing from one human being to another. It's an approximate thing, but this is to, to, to simplify it a little bit. It does tell you something about that, and it tells you this is live organ harvesting. There's no question. This is systematic live organ harvesting with a nationwide stable of some kind, or maybe regional, right? Now, now there were some difficulty with the interpretations of that data. There were iterations. There were internal arguments. I was part of that. Uh, but this was the spark, and this was what set things off, and we're here to honor, in some extent, just to honor that research today, because this was a profound effort of many years. Uh, now, we also put together uh, end organ pillaging. I joined forces with David Matus, David Kilgore, and we put together our own update, which had some of the same data and some different data, but it was the same idea. It was transplant volume studies. In our case, we tried to make the rhetoric very minimal uh, and make it a very accessible document for, document for reporters, uh, even though it still ended up being 700 pages <laughs> with 2,300 footnotes. Now, the interesting thing is both the White Fig Report and uh, Bloody Harvest, The Slaughter, and Update, this is the End Organ Pillaging Report, were verified by CCC researchers, the Congressional Executive Commission on China researchers. Now, I, I don't mean to characterize people, and it's, it's not fair to sort of reduce them to stereotypes, but to some extent, these are Chinese researchers. Uh, they're here in Washington, and I think their job is to keep congressman from saying something stupid, okay, <laughs> at some level. I mean, they're there to make sure that garbage doesn't get uh, processed, that garbage stops at the door. And they looked at both reports. Uh, they asked a lot of questions. Uh, and they took their time. They took, uh, I know on our update, they took two months. It was very badly formatted when we handed it to them. They came back and basically gave a green light for hearings. Now, to me, uh, I don't, I never, I'm always about evidence. I always like to present evidence. I like people to uh, come in with a skeptical attitude and examine the issue for themselves fresh. But it is also true uh, that once something is verified by these CCC China researchers who can actually read the footnotes, you know, all 2,300 of them, uh, any other opinion about this report or about some of these conclusions is essentially a political opinion. It is not evidence-based. This is the evidence-based opinion, is you know, somebody's objective coming in and looking up those footnotes. Uh, and there's no way around that. Now, it is also a fact that this led to what I'd call elite acceptance uh, during 2016. Uh, so we had the Globe and Mail, we had the Times of London, we had CNN, and for the first time, 
the New York Times, who was a little bit of a late arrival, but they came in finally and started reporting on this issue after well over a decade of just ignoring it, simply ignoring it. Suddenly, they're reporting on it uh, in a fairly lively way. Uh, now, we also had the emergence of new public advocates, if you like the sort of soft power aspect. This is the sort of hard power research aspect. The soft power would be Anastasia Lynn. Uh, at the same time, there were new groups, uh, Doctors Against Forest Organ Harvesting, which had been around for a while but became more prominent, uh, and, and several other uh, groups which, which have formed around this issue. There finally, there was new acceptance, uh, grudging acceptance by Amnesty International, I have to say, but it's still there. Uh, Human Rights Watch, and especially Freedom House, which finally came out with a report uh, giving uh, a lot of attention to the organ harvesting issue, particularly the organ harvesting of prisoners of conscience issue. Now, but the biggest co contribution of all was probably the hearing that was held by Congressman Smith and Congressman Warbecker. Charles was there, I was there, uh, David Matus was there, and so was Francis Delmonico. Now that hearing, uh, and the fact that the resolution uh, against, uh, the resolution uh, speaking about, for the first time, about the organ harvesting of prisoners of conscience, the combination of that was fairly simultaneous, and uh, the hearing did get a lot of play, uh, and it was very important because it showed that the medical forces, which had been trying to negotiate to sort of a, a very comfortable agreement with China on this issue, uh, weren't really getting anywhere and that there was an impatience within the political sphere. This was very important to, to flag to the medical, to the medical uh, world, which is, you know, is not very uh, accustomed to negotiating with people like the Chinese, quite frankly. They don't know how to negotiate with Beijing. This is a very, uh, uh, it's, it's a very difficult problem than the ones they've dealt with in other places like the third world. That change uh, in the political sphere immediately two weeks later uh, the European Parliament passed almost exactly the same resolution. Uh, and, and I think we could say that we were on to a new sphere. I mean, this had gone an issue which had gone from kind of something that people considered sort of a kidney in the bathtub story, a kind of urban legend, had suddenly become quite real. And, uh, and especially, as I said, in the media. Now that, you could really see the effect of this because of the Chinese response. And the Chinese, if you like, slash the Transplantation Society response, which was to try to say, look, actually China's reformed. We're no longer uh, harvesting prisoners, organs, and we are now uh, in a new world, and we're actually here to teach the world how to build a better transplantation environment. Uh, now that is a story of three conferences, and I'll just summarize what happened there. Basically, in August, 2015, uh, August 2016, they held the major Transplantation Society conference in Hong Kong, and that ended, it wasn't supposed, it was supposed to be a ratification of how China had changed. Uh, instead, it ended with Dr. Chapman, one of the TTS presidents, saying that what the Chinese doctors, Chinese surgeons had done was appalled the world. Now, th this is something that translates very well into Chinese, and it was very well understood, and a lot of Chinese surgeons got on planes uh, right after that uh, event, that press conference. That was fairly significant. It, it, it was a disaster for the perception that China was uh, changing and, that, uh, and so forth. Uh, now, the second failure was in Beijing, uh, a couple of months later, the Chinese said, okay, we'll control it this time, we'll hold our own conference. Uh, they paid for a lot of people to come up, uh, but there was no press coverage whatsoever. So it, it basically ceased, it didn't really exist. Now, the third one was just this year, which was at Vatican. The Va uh, this was the Vatican conference, which was intended, I mean, to make a long story short, it was intended to sort of have the Pope was going to sprinkle holy water and sort of say, uh, the, you know, the pro there are problems about organ harvesting, but they're not in China. They're in, they're in Pakistan and, and Egypt and, and, and all these sort of various states and maybe, maybe some of the mid other Middle Eastern states. Uh, now, that's, that happens to be, that's true, that there are problems about organ harvesting in, in some of these countries, and I don't think anybody who studies this would deny it. But the fact is, if you want a political prisoner 
If you want the organs of a political or religious prisoner, there's only two countries you can go to. Uh, you can go to China, or you can go to the ISIS, right? And I don't recommend the hotel facilities that ISIS uh, offers you. Uh, this, is, this is a simple fact, that there's only really one state that's doing this in a, in a mass level. Uh, doing, killing, uh, or, or uh, taking organs from uh, prisoners of conscience. Now, what happened? Again, New York Times to the rescue. They came in with an article saying, actually, the fact that the Chinese are here is very controversial. And uh, that was followed by the Telegraph and the Guardian uh, in, within hours. Uh, the complete difference in the way this was perceived, and the, the Pope pulled out. Uh, he was supposed to address the conference. He was supposed to, OK, yes, sir. Now, there, the interesting thing that also didn't happen was there was no press debunk cycle. In other words, when you, an issue rises, you expect the next step by the press is usually to sort of say, actually, that issue is false, right, and to, to debunk it. That's, that's the next move by the press. It's how you keep people interested. That didn't really happen. And why didn't it happen? Well, partly because there was a perception that the Chinese are sloppy sometimes in terms of the transplant volume, wipe fig and, uh, uh, and organ pillaging couldn't have put together these reports if there hadn't been a kind of sloppiness on the local level of these hospitals in reporting uh, their own volumes, right? In other words, they were saying, uh, the, the, on the state level, they were saying we're doing 10,000 transplants a year. But on the local level, when you started actually adding up what their, every hospital was actually saying about themselves, it was something more like 60 to 100,000 is my, my personal estimate for this. 60 to 100,000 transplants per year. Uh, but they don't make mis the same mistakes. Once that had happened, the idea of once the reports are out, once the New York Times has reported on it, the idea of going to a hospital that's identified as, say, you know, performing 5,000 transplants a year like Chen Jin, and expecting them to then say, when you walk in the door, say, yeah, we have 500 transplants available. No, they're not going to say that. They're going to say, we have 50 transplant uh, beds available, or we have five transplant beds available. They will not make the same mistake twice. Uh, but the key thing, and I think this is where we do get into sort of some news here, is there is no actual sign of improvement. Okay, we're not, uh, we don't see any indicators that the transplant industry in China is undergoing some sort of difficulty. There is no sign of any hospitals closing. On the contrary, uh, TFP Rider Healthcare is a major, this will be of more interest obviously in back in where I'm from in London, but TFP Ryder Healthcare is a major architectural firm in London, very creative, they've done a lot of great work. Uh, they are currently, yeah, okay. They're currently uh, building a $2 billion medical city in Dalian. Now Dalian happens to be one of the most notorious centers for the organ harvesting of Falun Gong, and it's also where plastination started. The bigger case, the more disturbing news, is what Human Rights Watch has come out with, which is the DNA cases. Uh, in, that is, they are mapping uh, all Uyghurs in Xinjiang. They are mapping their DNA. Uh, now, this appears to be kind of visible on purpose, and, uh, but it's also true that Xinjiang is China's laboratory. It's often things that start in Xinjiang like organ harvesting, like live organ harvesting, eventually spread to the rest of China. The interpretations here, uh, i just go through very briefly. I talked to Sophie Richardson about this. Let's go from the most, ex let's go from the most, the mildest one. The mildest one would be they have health concerns for the Uyghur population, right? Uh, drug addiction and so forth. The second one would be a little, a little tougher is a propaganda point. They want to make the point if you, we comprehensively map uh, the DNA of the Uyghur people, that we can show that they're actually Han Chinese. They're mainly Han Chinese. Okay, you'll see this right now in Britain. It's over the Brexit debate. There's a lot of talk about how the British people aren't really British. They're actually French and Italian and Spanish. And, and you know, this is to sort of say it's, it's a, you know, you shouldn't be doing this Brexit thing. Now, in, in this case, they want to show you're actually Chinese just like us, right? That's a possibility. There's a propaganda point. There's also, obviously, it fits into China-wide prof profiling and surveillance. Now, we've, we've seen that they're taking all the financial data on each per individual and putting it in a single system along with their Donway. 
and now they want to do health as well, okay. Finally, there's obviously terrorist surveillance. You've got terrorism in, in Xinjiang. You want to uh, show that they can map your family, and so the family consequences will be severe. Uh, that seems fairly likely. But there's another problem, which is this potentially is used for harvesting. Now, there's some argument about whether or not this is actually DNA profiling, or it's what we call HLA typing. This is a complex medical issue, and we're trying to determine that now. And you know, but if it is for, in fact, to sort of turn the entire Uyghur population into a potential harvesting source, we have a serious problem. Now that would be, that might sound sort of science fiction -y. Okay, let's go one step further. Now the fact is that they have been doing DNA testing of Uyghurs for many years. Uh, I've talked to three doctors, confidentially, who had to go into the field to go to the most extreme villages, uh, remote villages, and they took DNA sampling of school children. Now, why did they do that? I asked, what was this about? Each one of them, without any prompting from me, said it's bio war. This is a, a kind of a, you know, they're looking at kind of a DNA bomb or something that affects Uyghurs but doesn't affect Han Chinese. I, I have nothing to say about this except that it's Certainly, historically, we know that the Chinese have, have a robust biowarfare program and with genetic splicing. Uh, and I, I will say nothing more about that. I, I, I can draw no conclusions. But you can see the kind of the range of interpretations we have on this. But the idea that we should just sort of ignore it or that that's not news information or this doesn't have some strong significance for Falun Gong because after all, DNA testing started with Falun Gong in 2013. According to Ming Wei, there were six provinces where Falun Gong, these were people who had all been in trouble at some point with the law in China, and all of a sudden, they're banging on their doors and taking a DNA cheek swab. Now, we never knew what that was for. We don't know that any of those people have been harvested, but it sure looks like that's the possibility because they took a blood sample at the same time. Okay, the final thing then that is new is the dog that didn't bark. That is relative inaction by uh, Westminster, certainly, and certainly to some extent by the US government. Uh, now, I'm seeing some rumblings. We were just with the State Department yesterday, and we're seeing some rumblings that they really do want to do something here on this. But I think the question you have to ask, and this is what one of the State Department officials put it to me, they said, look, why wouldn't they just wipe out the Uyghurs? I mean, what are the consequences? This is what they've learned from the Falun Gong case. This is what Beijing has learned. There are no consequences to this. Really not that much. They've lost this propaganda war, in a sense. But the consequences to the medical industries and the rest of it are zero. The consequences to the pocketbook are zero. So why not? Why not do it? So what I'm suggesting is that we raise the price. Now that goes one thing obviously to do with, it's, I think the minimum requirement is end U.S. organ tourism to China. Uh, I'd prefer that it was explicit, but if you want to do an you know, a sort of non-explicit bill, that's fine. The other thing, of course, is non-cooperation with transplant surgeons. Now that's something the medical community should really be responsible for, but there's a perfectly good uh, historical precedent for that, and that is the Soviet psychiatrists. The Soviet psychiatrists, once we realized that they were doing terrible things to dissidents, this was in my own lifetime, my parents were psychologists, uh, we, they couldn't come to conferences. They couldn't come over to the United States. Now there's a further aspect of that, and this is something I think the State Department's quite interested in, which is to look at doctors under the Magnitsky or the impunity index, it's often called, as a way of shutting certain people out. Now this is where Wojpfig plays the key role because Wojpfig is the only group that has really looked at these doctors closely. They have a database of every transplant surgeon. How What's the number? 9,514. Okay. 9,514. You heard it here. Uh, and it's a real database of these surgeons. Now, I'm not suggesting all 9,000. It'd be more like nine. Let's start with nine and move from there. But I think there are cases where you have doctors who performed a thousand liver transplants and at the same time are ahead of anti-cult activities in their province. And this to me is a profile of a person who should never be into the, allowed into this country. Uh, so I'm going to end there because I know I'm over time and thank you very much. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Goldman.
Okay, our next speaker, Dr. Wang Zhiyuan. Uh, Dr. Wang is the president of WOIPFG, and he's the key storyteller of this documentary that we're going to see later. And also, he has been, uh, he attended the fourth military medical university in China, majoring in aviation medicine. His medical career started in 72 in China. And in 1995, Dr. Wang was the researcher in Harvard Medical School. His focus was carotid arteries transplantation. And now we're going to invite Dr. Wang to give us a, the new evidence of ongoing organ harvest crimes in the past year. Dr. Wang. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My English is very slow. So I speak Chinese. Uh, I ask uh, Zhui's help uh, translate English, make sure everybody is learning, understand uh, clear. I know is somebody is just uh, learn, learning Chinese, so I speak Chinese. Wo Jin Tian Xiang Da Jian Lan, Dai Biao Zui Cha Guo Ji. 报告我们追查国际从去年六七月份到今年的六月份对中共的火灾法轮功学院器官这件事情持续调查的结果 Between the July 2016 and June 2017, WIPFG has investigated five areas. Number one, we have done investigations on 169 hospitals which are qualified for organ transplant. And the number of transplants are huge. 追查国际从去年七月到今年六月对中国大陆一百六十九家具有国家器官移植资质的医院进行了持续的调查。这些医院大量 same as before, most regions of China, the amount of organ transplantation remains tremendous, and the average wait time is still very short, suggesting abundance in organ source. Some hospitals still offer green channel for critically ill patients. Quote, for Emergency liver transplantation, end of quote. 第二个方面, 中共用所谓的老死亡的谎言, 或未继位的网络封配系统, 掩盖了他们持续的对法轮功的获得器官. Second, under the legal cover of the opaque Brain death organ donations and the organ distribution network by the National Health and Family Planning Commission. The crying of life organ harvesting Falun Gong practitioners is more routine than before. Number three, there are hospitals openly admitting that they had previously used organs from Falun Gong practitioners, suggesting that they are still using them at the moment. Number and number four, there are still very few people are voluntary donors of organs. However, they have a huge amount of organ transplants still going on in China. It's very uh, confusing why that happened. Number five, 吉林大学第一附属院和吉林的旅游广播公司联合在今年6月1号到6月30号推出了一个实力儿童 
肝脏免费移植的促销活动。And the most number five, and the most astonishing, recently Jilin Provincial Tribal Radio and the Hepatic Transplantation Center of the First Hospital of Jilin Province jointly started a program of free liver transplantation for ten children. 大家都知道，在全世界最发达的器官移植最发达的。美国，它有一点二亿自愿捐献人群，又有全国法落的发达的网络分配系统。就这样，美国的前副总统切尼为做一个器官等两年，排队等两年。As you know, in the U.S., there are about 120 million、uh, voluntary donors. However, like for example, the pres Previous Vice President Cheney made a liver transplant. He had to wait for two to three years. 大家都知道，在美国是这样的啊，做一个肝脏移植，平均等待肝或肾平均等待两到三年。在中国，我们调查了上百家，就刚才我说一百六十九家，军队、武警或地方的器官移植的医院。这是国家负。发发了这个器官移植资质的顶级的医院，他们平均啊都是等待时间一至两周，长的也就是一两个月。我们在近期要出一个报告里面，我们将会呈现八十多个录音调查录音，许多医院都是积极的招揽生意，说他们的供体多的是。很快就可以做，运气好的话，一两天，一般就是一两个星期。大家可以到网上听一听。However, in China, as we just investigate, as, as I mentioned earlier, 169 hospitals, they claim the average time for waiting an organ is one to two weeks, or the most two to four weeks. And more. Uh, we're going to uh, publish about 80 uh, recordings from those hospitals we called to uh, show this evidence. Recent, soon. 桂林的一八一解放军医院，解放军驻桂林的一八一医院，就公开的讲，他们供体多的是，做不完向外面送。In Guilin, uh, 181 military hospital, they said we have a lot of、uh, sources. Uh, if we, even they want to give out for free. 我们归纳我们从去年六七月份到今年六月份的调查结果，可以这样说，在中国大陆，大量活在法轮功学院器官的国家犯罪，一直在继续。而且在有些医院比过去还做得多。So, uh, between the July 2016 and June 2017, as we recently investigated, the organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners is still going on, and not only that, they are still doing in a mass scale. 有些医院呢，就明确讲，他们肝移植含有绿色通道。何为绿色通道呢？就是急诊肝移植。Yeah, some hospitals still offer the quote-unquote green channel for critically ill the patients for emergency liver transplant. 刚才我已讲过了，更为让人吃惊的，也是迫在眉睫需要向全世界呼吁的是，竟然又出现了，再度出现了免费促销，肝脏的免费促销。Yeah, the most astonishing, as I mentioned earlier,、uh, not only they still do the organ transplant、uh, in massive scale, but they still come up with this free、uh, liver transplant for patients. Ah, in 两两千零六年三月九日，在华盛顿 D.C. 中共火灾法轮功学院器官曝光之后。在四月份，吉林的心脏病医院曾经推出过血价促销，就是心脏移植前五名只收五万人民币。而四月二十八号呢
、湖南省人民医院，二十例肝和肾移植免费注销。Okay, uh, back in 2006, after Mar March 9th, when the organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioner news were broke out, in April of that year, uh, we found out Jilin Province they are already. Uh, giving five free liver do, uh, liver transplant, and then April 28th in Hunan Province, there was a hospital they want to give out 20 free liver do, uh, transplant. 而且这个犯罪活动比中国用啊这个所谓的老死亡 DCD 的谎言，或这个这个网络的啊危机为网络的分配系统这个合法的外溢。掩盖下，现在已经成了常规的工作了。And using those、uh, quote unquote brain death and some other、uh, tricks, they can cover up those、uh, donation,、uh, the so-called transplant source, the donation source. And now they can、uh, openly do this kind of、uh, organ transplant、uh, around the world. 所以今天我在美国的国会。借此机会，向美国政府，也向全世界呼吁：所有的正义的人士，所有的国家组织，都应该立即站起来。这是一场维护人类根本的道德良知和生存权的一场人间的战争，不仅仅是追求中共的反人类罪行。也是每一个人历史赋予的，也是历史赋予每个人的责任和荣荣耀。Yeah, as this uh, uh, precious opportunity now at uh, the U.S. Capitol, I would like to uh, call for all the governments around the world, especially U.S. government and everyone, to stand up, not only to do uh, per Protect the human rights, and but also to save all those、uh, innocent lives, and this is very important for the history of humankind. 同时，我也邀请、要求、希望这个所有的啊，这个国家对于涉嫌参与火灾法轮功学院七等官的罪犯进行。深入调查，这是第一。第二，对于那些进入美国的或者进入其他国家的涉嫌犯罪，这个火灾法轮功学院机关的涉犯犯罪的责任人，应该采取切实的法律的程序，至少不允许他进入这些国家，至少应该启动司法的调查。不能让这些罪犯逍遥法外。Okay, I would like to call for all the governments around the world to do a detailed、uh, investigation of those criminals that are involved for the organ harvesting, and especially the U.S. government to stop those criminals to get into the country, or we have to start a legal process、uh, to really investigate all those criminals. Cannot let them go、uh, without any、uh, consequence. 还有一条，就是禁止外国到中国为中国培养这些移植的人员。And also, we would like to ask、uh, the big hospitals around the world do not train those surgeons from China. 也应该、so、do this. 也应该禁止外国的公民到中国去移植，使这些人。在无不知不觉中，涉于参与这项犯罪活动。And also, each government should stop their citizens to go to China to do organ transplant. 谢谢各位。Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wang. And our next speaker is、uh, Dr. Charles Lee. Uh, Dr. Lee was born in 1965, experienced the Cultural Revolution firsthand. After the Tiananmen Massacre, he escaped 
in 1991 to the U.S. pursuing an advanced degree at U of Illinois at Bernard Champaign. While conducting medical research at Harvard Medical School in the mid-1990s, Dr. Lee came across the Falun Dafa spiritual discipline and began practicing. Since the persecution on Falun Gong started in 1999, he went back to China several times, undertook to spread the truth about Falun Gong and the persecution by the communist regime. He was arrested and unlawfully sentenced to three years in prison despite the continuous physical and the psychological tortures as well as the intense pressure to renounce his beliefs. Dr. Lee never cooperated with the prison guards. After his release in 2006, he has been continuing the efforts to bring true information into China, which he believes is extremely critical for bringing freedom to Chinese people. He is now the spokesman for the Global Service Center for Quitting the Chinese Communist Party and has been featured in the award-winning film Free China. And of course, he's uh, our uh, director for public awareness of WIPFG. So let's welcome Dr. Li. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, Professor Nian, Ms. Ethan Gottman, and uh, Dr. Wang have explained a lot of things about uh, what uh, Warpeg has done and and the history and recent investigations. I will focus on the you know ten years of investigation by the uh, Warpeg. They, the title of my speech is uh, "Stop the Genocidal Mass Murder by the CCP." Before we proceed with the um, the, uh, the the slideshow, I want to just introduce a little bit about what WAPIC has been doing uh, in the last 10 years. We, we have uh, collected 1,628 pieces of evidences and pub published more than 70 reports on this issue, and also 19 phone conversations recordings we, um, after conducting hundreds and thousands of telephone interviews and investigations on more than 9,500 9, uh, transplant surgeons and uh, the offices from 891 hospitals in China that have been involved in transplant operations and also procured 35 testimonies from five Politburo standing committee members and one vice chairman of the Central Military Commission and political, um, Politburo member and also um, the uh, the uh, um, there's like the defense minister and all those things. So um, we'll, we'll proceed with actually uh, uh, the uh, the emphasis of this um, topic is the state crime. I, can you go back a little? Uh, yeah, the, the st state crime um, by the CCP regime. The uh, international criminology, uh, the definition for state crime is the activity or failures to act that uh, break the state's own criminal law or public international law. Uh, for for the purpose of this uh, definition of the state, uh, uh, including those uh, officials and bureaucracy and institutions, bodies and organizations, comprise, uh, comprising the apparatus of the government. Uh, next slide. Um, if we look back, the characteristics of the uh, the uh, persecution of Falun Gong is. Um, it's the most de de devastating and malignant crime with the greatest evilness a government could ever do onto a, a peaceful and innocent people in the 21st century. The scope of this crime is far beyond the definition of the state crime. Um, I will explain you know, the structure uh, of uh, politics in, in China, but most fundamental thing is that uh, the political system in China is totally di uh, different from this country because there are also three branches in China um, they are the party, the Communist Party, the government, which is the administrative branches, and military, the People's Liberation Army, and armed police force. All these, in the persecution of Falun Gong, all these three branches are involved. And all, all related domestic laws and inter international laws have been broken or violated. So then we go to the, uh, um, the political organizations, in China, yeah, um, it's like this. Uh, China has a constitution. It says the CCP controls all of the state organs and the, the military. Uh, in China, the, um, uh, for the administrative branches, there are four branches, like the National Congress, State Council, the Central Government and Military Committee, 
and the chairman of the central government, they are all controlled by the CCP. And also, um, in every level of this government, there is a corresponding CCP committee, which means whatever organization you are in, there is, there is a CCP committee, and uh, the governor or the manager of that organization will answer to the secretary of the committee of that same level. Um, so it's, it's, you know, at that time when the persecution started, that all the power is concentrated into only one person. It was Zhang Zemin. Next slide. The, um, um, this mechanism actually take a, you know, a, a essential role in the perse persecution of Falun Gong. This is uh, a simple illustration of the uh, of political organizations in China. We have, we have three colors. The, uh, the red ones are the uh, party system from the uh, CCP Central Committee top down to all different levels. And then blue ones are the administrative branches. And as you can see, in each of the boxes, all different levels, there is a, you know, some kind of red stuff. Those are like committees of the CCP. And the green ones are the, uh, the, uh, the uh, military. And on the top is Jiang Zemin. You know, at that time, Jiang Zemin was the chairman for all these branches. Next slide, please. So the commanding system is from top down, of course, from Jiang Zemin. Jiang Zemin actually uh, forced all the other six Politburo standing members to agree on the persecution of Falun Gong because all the other six, you know, they did not agree in the beginning. And also, Jiang Zemin formed a, uh, a 16 office. Um, uh, Dr. Ne also mentioned 16 office. A 16 office uh, is above all laws, and it can give commands to all the three branches we have mentioned. Next slide. And we, you know, actually also uh, Dr. Nia mentioned the instruction from, uh, from Jiang Zemin is like ruin the, ruin the reputation, collapse the, uh, financially, and uh, eliminate the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the bodies, you know, the, uh, the cure them. So that's, that's, that's how they uh, uh, started. And uh, um, every Falun Gong practitioner they, can, they could find, they would force him or her to give up the Falun Gong. If they don't convert, then there will be uh, arrest. Um, and uh, um, torture or even murder. So we have a lot of evidence showing that this is a state crime, which means all the government branches are involved and also um, the, uh, the John Zemin gave the instruction. So one of the typical uh, evidence we have collected is the, uh, the defense minister, Liang Guanglie. When he answered the phone uh, investigations by the Wopek member, he admitted that the Central Committee of the Military has discussed this issue on, on how to use this, uh, the, the local branch military units to, uh, to lock up the Falun Gong practitioners as a donor pool uh, for the transplant um, operations. And also um, the, um, the hospitals, you know, that's really, uh, right, Liang Guli said in the hospitals, the, the military hospitals were, you know, were doing this, uh, these kind of investigations. Next slide. And another phone call is with the, uh, <coughs> bless you, Bai Su Zong. This, this guy is the um, uh, director of the uh, Peeps, People's Liberation, Liberation Army General Logistics Department of Health between the year of uh, um, 98 to 2004. He specifically told the investigators that, say that Zhang Zemin gave an order on, uh, um, on, on this task, like, uh, or, you know, started the organ transplantation operations on Falun Gong practitioners. And they also said, you know, they, this is a big issue. Everybody was so uh, focused and very, very much emphasized on doing this work. So anti-Falun Gong work is uh, like uh, the uh, national task. <clears throat> And then we have also um, Bo Xilai. This person has been put in prison by you know Communist Party itself. But when he was in Germany, uh, he was asked who was who gave the uh, uh, cons uh, instruction to harvest organs from uh, live Falun Gong practitioners. He said uh, President Zhang very clearly said that it's not him. You know, this Zhang gave the order, and then. Um, we also have Zhou Benxuan, uh, who was the former general secretary of the Legal and the Judicial Committee of the CCP. 
um, Central Committee. This this um, uh, legal and judicial committee actually responsible for all the the police force, the court, and and all the you know legal system. So that's you know that's that's he directly admit that um, the uh, the the, uh, the organ harvesting organ from Hong Kong um, does exist in our country, and uh, we 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 Jian Rong. This guy is also uh, vice director for the. Uh, the legal and judicial committee. He, he, he. You know, when he was uh, uh, investigated by the uh, the phone call, he said he was no longer responsible for this uh, task. But that was like some time ago. But this thing did happen. Then we had uh, we had collected a uh, uh, actually a testimony from a armed force guard. He literally witnesses. Um, um, several Falun Gong practitioners who were in, uh, whose organs were taken out. And um, the uh, the you know he described in detail how a, a young lady was killed um, for her heart and other organs, and he described also some other very sickening stuff, like uh, the uh, uh, the doctors sucked the brain pulp out, and he didn't know what that's for. You know, very sickening. You know, because we we understand that the. Um, the organ harvesting, you know, a lot of times they don't give any uh, anesthesia to the uh, to the victims. Uh, one of the purposes is to torture them, um, and everything is done in sec uh, secrecy. Next slide. Um, then we have some other um, uh, witnesses um, from different pl um, places, and one of them is Chen Chang from the uh, um, the uh, number three hundred seven hospital. He specifically mentioned that. These Falun Gong practitioners, they don't have any names. They were, they were like coded. They, they give everybody a code, a number or something. There's no real name. But he claimed that you know, he could give you know, materials uh, confirming these are Falun Gong practitioners. He, he want to make sure that you know, uh, the, uh, the recipients uh, uh, you know, understand that this is a good organ source, you know, they are real Falun Gong practitioners, they, they are healthy and they're young, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Next slide. There are some other uh, circumstantial evidences, um, which means they, they did not deny when conf um, com being confronting this issue. And uh, if, you know, we, we, can, we can have a feeling that if, if the fact is the opposite, they would react in a totally different way. We have collected like uh, the phone conversation from five political um, Politburo standing members: uh, Zhou Yongkang, um, Zhang Gaoli, Li, Li Changchun, uh, Zhang Dejiang, and Zheng Qinghong. Um, one of the uh, one of the cases, yeah, Zhou Yongkang has also been arrested and put in prison right now. In 2008, there was an earthquake in Sichuan province. You know, he was uh, he was asked because uh, he was reported to saying that uh, uh, you know. 20 something Falun Gong practitioners escaped from the military cave, you know, underground cave. And he was, he was saying, I have to do this inve investigation I, uh, myself. For this kind of issue, you, you, you can only use the red line phone system to talk. You know, so I can answer you any question. I will do the investigation ourselves. Another case is Zhang Gao Li. Uh, he was uh, uh, visiting um, Kazakhstan um, in 2016. In June 2016, he was asked, because at that time, a lot of Falun Gong practitioners were suing Jiang Zemin for his, his crimes. One of the uh, claims is that you know, uh, millions of Falun Gong practitioners were arrested and was, uh, uh, was killed by organ harvesting. And uh, you know, the, uh, the person asked him to make sure the Jiang Zemin is protect, protected in the uh, political, bureau, um, political bureau meetings, and he it did not deny, you know, the fact, you know, the, the, the question about millions of Falun Gong practitioners being killed, and he only promised that uh, please let President Jiang, you know, um, pro, you know, uh, calm down because we're going to take care of that issue. So that that's what his answer. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, we um, so this this is this is the, you know the evidence and also the history of the uh, of the. Um, the persecution of Falun Gong, especially the organ harvesting, and it's clearly a state crime. Um, then we move to the another um, topic is the uh, 
the genocide. Actually, genocide is, you know, we have some, some um, collections from Rome Standards, Article 6 and also 7 uh, regarding, you know, the uh, genocide and uh, crimes against hum humanity. If you look at all the details of this definition, what the Communist Party has been doing to, <clears throat> to Falun Gong practitioners fits every item in, in, in this definition. So um, can you go down a little more? Yeah, this, this is a, a, uh, a curve uh, collected by the Minghui, um, Minghui um, website regarding those well-documented victims who have been tortured to death up to, up to June 2017. There were 4,103 uh, Falun Gong practitioners were killed or were murdered. We know all the details, like their names, when they were killed, and by what kind of method. But if you look at the uh, next slide, please. If you look at the organ harvesting, the uh, the scale is much bigger. And um, um, from the the uh, the evidence we have collected, we can come to this conclusion that the majority of the victims of forced organ harvesting are Falun Gong practitioners. One typical phenomenon is that right after the persecution started in 1999, the, um, the, the number of the organ transplant operations in China exploded. Um, the, uh, as one of the doctors says that the, uh, the number um, after 1999 you know, increased 10 times, and after 2005 increased another five times. So this is very phenomenal. And they also have organ tourism. They always claim that all these donors are very, uh, very healthy, very young. And uh, if you look at the like, exit prisoners, th those group of people, they don't have these characters, like uh, very young and healthy. Um, and, and also, we know that they, you know, millions of Falun Gong practitioners m missing because in the beginning of the persecution, a lot of people went to Beijing to, uh, to appeal to the government. A lot of people don't want to give their identities because they want to protect their local families or, or uh, government officials in local level. So a lot of them just uh, were sent to concentration camps. Um, we also have, of course, a lot of conversations with uh, our staff members and the CCP officials and witnesses confirming that uh, those were um, Falun Gong practitioners. Next. Yeah, we have, we have like 891 hospitals and 95, 19 doctors um, who, who have been involved in this organ harvesting. And i just like to give you three examples. One is the civilian um, hospital, the Tianjin Central Hospital. This is a, 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 a hospital, you know, uh, has 500 beds, and they claim they have 131 percent of the rotating rate, which means you know those beds are very used in a very efficient way. And if you do some simple, num simple numbers and uh, using like uh, 30 days as the uh, stay time in in the hospital after the uh, transplantation operations, you can you know give some number like uh, almost 8,000 operations per year. Another case is a military uh, um, hospital is a POAA 309 hospital. They have 393 beds for transplantation procedures. Using the same, uh, same fashion, you can have an estimate of 4,000 operations a year. And, and all these hospitals, uh, 891, some of them are small and local level. Um, on one of the reports, actually, in the Phoenix, um, they also claim um, actually, you know, there's some kind of um, description of how crazy the, uh, the uh, organ harvesting is in China. They say even uh, a town-level hospital can dare to do liver transplantation. transplantation. Uh, he mentioned that the uh, uh, Guangdong Humen, you know, that's like a town-level. Um, so over here we have a case of a Gong Yi, um, like a s s little, more, little bigger than a town-level uh, uh, um, uh, city in Henan province. This is a Chinese medicine hospital. Even a Chinese medical you know, medicine hospital can do these kidneys. One of the doctors, Dr. Li Hongdao, 
he has conducted 500 kidney transplants um, on, up to 2006. So it's very widespread and the scale is really big. And also we have reports next, yeah, um, from different people, um, including the, uh, the, some experts like Wu Mengchao and Huang Jianfu, and, and other witnesses. I think you know, we're going to see more detail in the, in the movie. So, so just wrap up, you, we, you know, to the systematic evidence we collected by the World Pig, there are 96 hospitals. These 96 hospitals, we have all this uh, related data on how we come to this conclusion. These hospitals conduct two to 3,000 cases, uh, operations per year, and there are another 50 civilian hospitals they, they do like 400 to 1,000 operations a year, and there are another 408 class A grade three, and some of the military hospitals, they are not approved by the uh, Department of Health for transplant operations, but they're still doing this. Uh, and also uh, 153 medium to small scale hospitals, local hospitals, they're also doing this. So on the first, 96 hospitals, they are approved by the, uh, the military, um, the uh, Department of Health, uh, but the others, they are not, but they're still doing these uh, operations. Um, we also believe that there's a huge donor pool, which is the uh, underground concentration camp. Um, by a lot of evidence, we have collected like 10 categories of the evidences to, you know, which can prove that this donor pool exists. The, the one is that waiting time is extremely short for a transplant organ. And you know, those, um, um, the, as been mentioned before, and also very high uh, percentage of emergency liver transplant. Uh, Dr. I mean, uh, Mr. Gutterman also mentioned this. And also they, they have so many organs available. They usually have multiple standby donors, and also they can offer free transplant to a new business. And another thing is that they have a very, very short warm ischemic time, meaning when you harvest organ and put it in, in, in the, uh, a reserve solution, that's you know, the warm ischemic, uh, ischemic time. If it's very short, usually it's like we, uh, within 10 minutes, zero to 10 minutes. Most of the time you can believe that those people you know, were, were killed alive because uh, as we understand that in China, there's no such a donation system. They don't have this kind of uh, system like in this country. So, and then next is um, a lot of hospitals, they can conduct multiple transplant operation, operations in the same day, in the same time. And um, we also have collected uh, about uh, 300 uh, academic papers. In those papers, they have some descriptions regarding uh, the donors, uh, how healthy they are, how young, you know, how they were, uh, the, how their organs are taken out. We had uh, some uh, detailed analysis last year in the, uh, in the congressional hearing, and those papers described, you know, the killing on demand. And uh, another thing is almost all Falun Gong practitioners who were detained went through the uh, forced blood testing, including myself, and we were not tell, told like what those for. Um, and there are some witnesses like uh, the, the uh, uh, actually the, the one famous is what the Su Jia Chen um, from both his hospital in 2006, two, two persons, uh, Annie and Peter, they came out to testify that there's a concentration camp underneath the hospital. Uh, 6,000 um, uh, Falun Gong practitioners were locked under there. And there's another, um, the uh, veteran um, Chinese medicine doctor, you know, he testified that there's uh, 30, 38 concentration camps throughout the country. The biggest race was the, in Jilin province, which could, which could lock up 120,000 people. Um, there's also a report by AFP on, in 2006 that the CCP was building the huge concentration camps in northeast and northwest of China. The next slides. Um, when the uh, next slides. when the uh, the uh, concentration camp was exposed in 2006 in Suzhou Ten, the first report was done by Minghui website. It was March 8th. 
uh, they, you know, the reporter says you know, they, they were claims and witnesses saying that they, uh, in Sujatin area, there was a huge concentration camp and those Falun Gong practitioners were taken, uh, the organs were taken out for transplantation purpose. And next day, March 9th, the Epoch Times also reported that Peter and Annie's tes uh, testimony we just uh, mentioned. So there was no reaction until uh, uh, March 22nd, which is uh, two weeks from the first exposure uh, of that concentration camp. The CCP invited one of the um, local official from the uh, U.S. Uh, consular. Um, they, you know, they just uh, bring this, uh, uh, brought this guy in and uh, have a, a brief tour of the hospital. And they waited until April 14th. They invited the uh, uh, um, general, I mean, uh, um, consulate general um, from local, you know, consulate. And then uh, another two officials from the Beijing embassy they made a three three and a half hours tour through throughout the hospital, which was like uh, more than a month later. They showed all the hospitals, the labs, and uh, the uh, the uh, trash house, and uh, the boiler house, and even the, even the chimney. And then they showed there's no evidence of this kind of um, claim. But we understand that the Communist Party has been a a master of cheating and deceiving. If they if there is no activities like that, you know, the organ harvesting on the, uh, you know, the uh, the practitioners in the concentration camp, they would, they they should, you know, they should have, and must have opened up the facility right away when when there was a claim like that, to show the outside, you know, there is no such a thing, and in the meantime, they would, uh, you know, fiercely attack the, the Falun Gong and uh, the related media. But they did not did not do so until two weeks later. They had somebody, and to to tour the facilities, and then waited an, an, you know, another almost three weeks to to show another group group of people. So that is you know how you know we we have collected all different uh, evidences showing this existing of um, uh, of the uh, cons huge donor pool. You know we believe they, there are a lot of people, millions of them were locked up. Um, so, for Wolpeg, we, we you know we have been working so many years and have so much evidences, and the reliability of the evidences from Wolpeg, uh, we have actually archived all the prints and the web-based publications. We have the phone recordings, and we have also corresponding receipts from the telephone companies with the time duration and the phone number we call to, and also. For those phone recordings, um, you know, we, we can have the uh, the orchestric labs to to really identify the the uh, the voice, because many of those people are actually public figures. You can find out their their speeches or, or things like that on the website, um, online, or some other resource. And uh, the of course, you know, the uh, the one of the case is that there is a doctor from Guangxi, uh, Guangxi, uh, Guangxi province. Uh, the Warpig interviewed him. He said, you know, they were Falun Gong practitioners, uh, were donors. And then later on, the Phoenix, you know, also interviewed him again, saying that uh, this doctor says, I did, I did not say those things. So if you compare those two voices, it's very clear that's the same person. So that's sort of things, you know, the, uh, what CCP does to confirm uh, all these um, things. Okay. Uh, anyway, so the, the another thing is that since this crime has been exposed, you know, CCP first, like, of course, they deny. But what they did was they, before this exposure, um, they always deny they never used executed prisoners as the source of organ for the transplant operation, operations. But ever since, ever since the exposure of this uh, forced organ harvesting on Falun Gong practitioners, they admitted that most of those uh, the organ source were from the uh, executed prisoners, and which is really funny because you know they I mean I I think they believe that they can use this le less evil crime to avoid the exposure and the blame of the much more serious crime I believe so 
And then, you know, they, they, uh, they claim that f uh, from 2015, they, w they were not using any executed prisoners, but instead they're using a donation system. For these two claims, actually, you know, for, you know, Warpik has a very detailed analysis on this ex executed prisoner system. And, uh, you know, from the numbers of the uh, prisoners and from the numbers that executed every year, it cannot match the scale of this huge number of transplant operat operations. And for the donation system, the Warpix investigation showed that the entire system is, is not ready. There are very few people registered as the donor for organs. So this is another downright light. However, this is another trick for them to distract people's attention from the crimes of false life um, organ harvesting, especially on, on um, uh, Falun Gong practitioners. And the saddest thing is, like a lot of people right now, they're arguing with the CCP if they are still using the exit prisoners for organ transplant. They totally forgot the key, the crime, the fact, the core is that they, they are doing this forced organ harvesting on so many uh, Falun Gong practitioners. So anyways, what, what we should do is, I believe is to realize that the CCP is really an evil regime and uh, the history of CCP is the history of killing. And the, this crime actually is, a, uh, um, is determined by its evil nature. And a lot of people actually really don't see because um, the CCP have a very heavy infiltration on the propaganda machine. You know, they control the media in a lot of countries. Um, so people were like you know, brainwashed. So it's, it's, it's difficult, but I, I think if we all stand together against these, uh, the crimes and then help to expose the crime and make all possible efforts to stop this crime. And we hope and we believe that the, the world will enter the era of peace and prosperity without the CCP. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. And uh, really, uh, there's so many important messages need to be delivered today, and we hope this is the beginning of the ending of this horrible crimes against human, uh, human. So we were real, uh, real late, so let's take a few minutes, about 15 to 20 minutes break, and have uh, some uh, light lunch we provide, and later on we're gonna show the documentary. Thank you, and you can take a break, thanks. <laughs>